I have been really struggling with my art lately. I started this month on a high note for what it's worth. I felt inspired, I felt motivated. I had a big fat stack of panels to work through. I still do. It felt like the world was my oyster. But then I started some preparatory studies for these recent paintings that I wanna work on and everything fell apart. My initial sketches were strong, but the execution just kept falling flat. And with every minor failure or setback, my insecurity and my self-doubt, they just started growing. So I eventually had to throw all of my plans for the month out the window and just focus on building up my confidence again. So in this video, I wanna share all the art that I've been working on and also talk about some actionable tips that you can use to overcome insecurity and self-doubt and build up confidence in your own art. And if you've ever thought about having your artwork made into custom products, you're going to love the sponsor of this week's video, Fiber. Nothing will kill the joy that you have for the creative process faster than insecurity and self-doubt. Art is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. But if you're constantly doubting yourself and thinking that your work is garbage, it's not gonna be fun anymore. So the first thing that I did when I started to feel this way was to put everything that I was working on aside and to start something new, something different, something that would allow me to get back to the very basics of creating. Really, the reason that you want to get back to basics when you're feeling frustrated and insecure about your work is because you need a simple win. You need some kind of success. You need those good happy chemicals to flood your brain and make you feel like you're not a worthless piece of garbage. So what I did here when I was feeling like this was to try some lettering, try making a font. And to do this, I actually used oil paint and this material called Duralar that I'll talk a little bit about later. But lettering is always something that I really wanted to do. It's always a thing that I've been really passionate about, but I've never really had the opportunity to try, or I guess never the push to actually make an effort to give it an attempt. So that's what I was working on here. I spent a couple of days practicing hand lettering and oil paint. I printed out all the letters in the font that I wanted that I already own and like some, you know, like uppercase, lowercase, some punctuation, some brief phrases, etc., just to kind of like practice some brush work, some brush control, some detail work. I had muscles in my wrist that I never knew that it could be sore, that suddenly I was getting sore again. Uh, and it was just a nice break. It's very different from the stuff that I usually do. And it was almost a meditative kind of task. It was tedious in a good way. And it allowed me to just sit, still be productive, still make work, but kind of meditate in my creativity and let all of that frustration, all of that insecurity, all of those feelings of just not being good enough just kind of ease away just kind of leave my body my bloodstream whatever and just allow me to focus on the task in front of me i was listening to i think a D, &D podcast called worlds beyond number with brenda lee mulligan abria iyengar and a couple of people lou wilson um eric ishii while i was doing this and i really really enjoyed I don't know, just like the the little creative date that I took myself on, just like trying something different. Often I feel like frustration for me really stems from doing these same kinds of tasks over and over again or jumping into projects too quickly. Maybe something worth trying for you could be to just go for a walk, take a walk, maybe do some gardening, bake a loaf of bread, just try something a little bit different, something still creative. That gives you an opportunity to use your hands, do some manual labor, but that isn't the kind of creative, frustrating task that you have negative feelings about right now. Maybe you take out a piece, like a piece of paper and a pen and you just draw some straight lines in a sketchbook or do some basic doodles, allow your mind to just be completely empty, no thoughts, head absolutely empty, not a trace of a single thought in there and just create something and have zero expectations attached to it. The nice thing about doing this lettering project was that I knew that if I did mess up, it like there would be no consequences. And it really allowed me to, again, get back to basics, practice some of the fundamentals when it comes to brushwork and that detail work, just kind of filling in all the little parts of these letters. And I don't know, it's, the letters, they're not perfect, but I did have fun. I think it was a valuable exercise.
Before we get into the rest of this video, I have a sponsor that I think that you guys are genuinely going to love. I am so excited to work with this company. Their name is Fiber Art. If you have ever wanted to have your artwork custom woven, not printed, but fully woven into an heirloom quality blanket made right here in the USA by a small business, Fiber Art is for you and it is so worth checking out. Fiber Art allows artists to create custom woven fiber art in the form of blankets, tapestries, or upholstery fabric. Your art is woven, not printed, but woven via a modern day Jacquard loom operated by highly skilled weavers. They're meticulously crafted using 100% cotton and recycled cotton resulting in a super soft and breathable blanket. The blankets they sent me are so gorgeous. They're so high quality. All of my housemates love them and especially my cat. I especially loved their color palette blanket, which I'm currently using as a reference to help me design a blanket using my own art. And their weave on demand program means that you have to put up very little money to get started with fiber art. You can sell your blankets on demand. You don't have to hold any inventory and they will make them and send them out to your customers for you. This is an amazing service that only large companies usually offer, but fiber art is really trying to do the best possible service for their artists. And I really appreciate it. If you want to give fiber art a try, check out the description to learn more. With some confidence now restored, it was finally time to do a little bit of experimentation. I always kind of turn back to moths and butterflies when I'm looking for inspiration. I realize I don't show you guys often moths and butterflies, like I don't work on them a ton. And that's because I kind of struggle with them a little bit or like the, the symmetry, but I do really enjoy them as subject matter. They are so pretty. There are so many different kinds of butterflies and moths out there. All of them are gorgeous. There are some moths and butterflies that have like this weird thing where they're like literally half male, half female. So like their wings are two different things. I think that is so cool. It's so amazing. I am just like so amazed by the beauty of the natural world. I think that really kind of flows into my love of landscape painting too. I just, I don't know. I, I'm so into nature. There's, it, our planet is so good, you guys. We have we are so lucky to live on this particular planet where our geography is so diverse and all the different like plants and insects and animals that we have, man, it's amazing. So, anyway, moths and butterflies. I wanted to do a couple of them just to kind of branch out a little bit, try something new. I have this like big light pad thing that I can now print off reference photos on and then just like kind of, you know, I guess trace. Yes, I, I do trace these uh, just to get the basic reference for like the shapes and where the patterns go because butterflies and moths can be kind of complicated and I am really not great at the symmetry. So yes, I did trace these out just to figure out where the symmetry was and then paint it on top of that. And I really had a great time with these. Again, I'm just building confidence here. I have painted moths and butterflies a lot, so it's not entirely new to me. I do have some level of familiarity with this subject matter, but I also know that I've improved a lot since I last worked on moths or butterflies. I think the last time that I seriously worked on this was, man, e years ago when I was really into gouache, before I ever started this channel, absolutely. And I kind of immediately had a bit more confidence going into this project because I had some familiarity with subject matter, but I was also doing more of the experimentation thing. So if you are really stuck, consider returning to stuff that you know how to do, stuff that you're very familiar with if you are feeling insecure about your work and you just want some kind of quick win. Again, the focus here is to have some just like initial successes to boost our confidence, right? And this is a part of a larger project for my art licensing portfolio. I have been thinking a lot about art licensing the past couple of, I don't know, weeks, months, been trying to get into it more. I am currently taking this course on art licensing by Stacey Bloomfield. It's called Leverage Your Art. And it's really all about creating patterns, portfolio pieces, collections that are kind of commercial focused. I know that not every artist wants to focus on kind of the commercial angle of their work, but I've found that thinking about my artwork in terms of products and patterns and single illustrations has been very refreshing. 
I normally think about my artwork in just like single one-off pieces or learning goals or like collections that are thematically linked but not like commercial focused. I've been making artwork for myself for a while, just just for me, not trying to sell it. And thinking about it from a commercial angle, I found it's been really freeing. I've enjoyed this. So working on this project was kind of a blast. The material and the isolated nature of these illustrations does mean that I'm not at risk of ruining the entire project if these don't go well. So the stakes are really low. Low stakes plus familiar subject matter equals a good confidence building opportunity. And with those started, at least they're not done by a long shot, but with those sort of started, I brought in the keys. I found these amazing photos of these keys. I was so excited to start these. I, this seems really random. I know I'm, I'm normally a landscape painter, but I don't know. I just, I wanted to branch out a little bit. I wanted to have fun. And with this focus on just like single one-off object illustrations, and this very low cost working on this like weird plasticky paper stuff, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me. It's made me feel a lot more confident. So yeah, lower the stakes, try something new, make sure that you feel like you can experiment and have fun and your confidence in your work will come back. Okay, so this is kind of like a work in progress still, all of these butterflies and some of these keys, but I do want to pop in and show them off to you guys really quick because I am really excited about how they're turning out. The material that I'm painting on is called Duralar. Um, it's like this frosted plasticky film. You can draw on it with basically anything. Um, I sketched some of these out in pencil and then I've been painting on the Duralar with oil paint. What I really love about it is that you can kind of paint on both sides. So that means that I can sketch, um, like do the sketch, paint just like you know, some basic colors. And then if I peel this up, I can still see the sketch. The sketch is the very first layer on here, but then I can also see the colors on the back of it. I think that's so cool. It's kind of like how you can paint in layers in digital art and still view things and flip back and forth only with actual paint. And you can do this on this cool material Dural R. I'm excited. So I did four butterflies. These are just kind of starting out, but I'm pretty excited to see where they're gonna go. I'm just very hyped about this material. I think it's gonna be really fun. It's allowing me to do lots of like kind of single object or single subject illustrations without having to think about removing the canvas texture later on and knowing that like everything is gonna be really easy to scan. And then these are those keys that you guys saw me start. I am really hyped about these guys. I found a bunch of pictures of antique keys from like the mid 1800s on the Metropolitan, the Metropolitan Museum of Arts website. They have their whole collection, their whole catalog available to view. And these keys aren't on display and they are public domain images, but I thought that it was just like kind of fun to like sketch these they're very interesting objects i'm pretty excited again these are just starting out layers i'm just trying to have fun i'm just trying to build some confidence and i think it's working i feel a lot better about my art and i feel excited again in a way that i hadn't um just a couple weeks ago i was finally starting to feel a little bit more confident and really just wanted to get excited again to do my kind of regularly scheduled oil painting projects. And so I actually picked up some new paint colors. My favorite paint brand really kind of of all time is Vasari. Vasari is I think a brand based in New York here in the US and they have the most gorgeous paint colors, natural earth tones, historic hues for any kind of artist that wants to have a little bit more of a muted color palette, more historical kind of feeling. Vasari is a great brand to look to. They also, I don't know, their paints are just so creamy, so high quality. It's kind of very soft, a little bit oily, um, not as, uh, I don't know, firm as like a gambling kind of paint, but I love it. I love it so much. I ordered a couple of new things um, and I'm just testing them out, giving them a little bit of a run for their money here. Just, I don't know, um, seeing how they work together and with some new paint colors really making me really excited and motivated and kind of inspired and some quick wins under my belt. 
I finally felt like I could start to ease back into my normal work, but I still felt a little bit nervous about jumping into something really big right away, so I wanted to take it easy, and that's where sketching comes in. I will admit I don't usually do sketching or a lot of preparatory stuff for my pieces, and I think that is a mistake, so I'm trying to rectify that a little bit more here. I found this great reference photo on ArtStation, um, or was it ArtStation? I found this great reference photo somewhere. I purchased it in this pack, and I kind of overlooked it at first. The lighting isn't super strong. Everything kind of feels like it sort of blends together, but it's a really great rocky, foresty scene, the kind of stuff that is my bread and butter. You guys know that I love painting rocks. I love doing forest stuff. This reference photo is kind of right up my alley, but... I wanted to change some things about it. I wanted to have a stronger light source and I really just needed to kind of modify this reference photo. So I was working on a lot of sketches and I still feel like I don't quite have the composition of this piece perfected, but I don't know. I feel like I'm definitely getting, pro uh, I'm, I'm making headway here. I'm. Yeah, I'm making headway, I'm getting progress. It's, I think, in a good spot. I am almost ready to start this painting. And so I set those sketches aside for a little bit. I wanted to let the composition kind of stew in my brain for a minute. So I decided to start preparing some panels. I picked up this weird, I don't know, it's new to me, I guess. Maybe it's not weird, but I picked up this, uh, primer or gesso kind of thing from Dick Blick. It's called Michael Harding's Non-Absorbent Acrylic Primer. It's a different kind of gesso-like product. I usually try to prepare my panels with um, GAC, what is it called? GAC 100. I do a couple of layers of that to seal the wood. I normally paint on wood panels. And then I go in with Gamblin's Oil Ground. I really like how it's tinted. You can get it in a bunch of different tints on the Dick Blick website. I really am kind of interested in seeing how this holds up. I have noticed that it scratches kind of easily, at least when I kind of rolled it over the surfaces that I had previously prepped in Oil Ground. Um, the surfaces that I have, the panels that I used where I just used GAC 100 and then this primer seems to be going pretty well. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> enough about panel preparation. I wanted to prepare some panels because I finally felt like I was confident enough to start painting regular stuff again. So <sighs> yeah, it was such a process. I don't know. I feel like I'm just kind of constantly battling insecurity and self-doubt when it comes to my work. I feel like I never quite have a good handle on feeling confident in my abilities and my skill set. I constantly feel like I'm just having to relearn the fundamentals and the basics again. So I don't really know how to fix that. If you guys have suggestions, leave them down below. I hope that you guys really enjoyed all the artwork that I've been working on, seeing that and kind of I don't know, learning more about how to improve your confidence and your own abilities. It's pretty crazy to edit this video and see just weeks worth of work distilled into 20 minutes. Um, really wild. If you guys want to see more of these videos, please let me know down in the comments. These art videos usually don't perform very well for me. I'm trying to change that, but I need your help. I need you to watch them, like them, share them with a friend, etc. I, these aren't really studio vlogs, so I don't know how I feel about calling them that. What do you guys think about the name Artist Diaries? Let me know down below in the comments. That's it for me in this video, basically. If you guys want to watch even more content from me, there should be some options on the screen for you right now. And check out our sponsor, Fiber Art. Genuinely, these blankets are so good. I am in the process of designing one right now, and I'm really excited. But anyway, that's all for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.